All right, today uh, we're going to look at silver border cards and see if they actually work. Uh, we're going to start off with more or less. The only silver border card I know, I hope you guys know silver border cards better than me. But this is my favorite. I was so inspired by this, uh, although I could do nothing with that inspiration. One blue. It's an instant. Add or subtract one or one, like spelled out one, from a number or number word on target spell or permanent until end of turn and then of course we got the flavor text why was five afraid of six because six seven eight you get it i don't think you guys get it because it's supposed to be seven eight nine but uh you know seven eight like eight nine but we reduced it all by one okay forget it what you can do is you can kill mana dorks with this thing. One toughness, they're, all, all the one toughness creatures are dead uh, to more or less. Not to mention you can uh, adjust the power and toughness on creatures. Like not like the lords. So a lord says plus one, plus one. Now it can be plus two, plus one, or plus one, plus two if you need to have that defense. So I think those are really, really sweet. I think this had, I wish this was a real card effectively i mean i could have actually renamed this to silver border cards we wish it actually existed all right let's move on we got tommy sins with the cheese stands alone it sounds like the cheese stands alone is a super popular one okay the cheese we got to be here on gatherer because scryfall doesn't work so well with uh these silver border cards the cheese stands alone what do we got here we got white white for generic it's an enchantment if you control no cards in play other than the cheese stands alone and have no cards in your hand, you win the game. It's like a flawless victory. There are no cards, no card. There has to be nothing in play other than cheese stands alone. How do you make that happen? Like obliterate and have no cards in your hand? Well, that's actually not too hard to make work. I would think that would get banned in Commander, in my opinion. I don't think it would last for very long. Oh, there's no music? Hold on, hold on. Let's get the music here. Let's get the music. Thank you very much for letting me know because the music is everything to this show. I got no music. My show is nothing. My show is nothing without the music. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to... Um... <laughs> it's actually so hard. I can't even know if you guys are talking about magic cards or ta saying something random in chat because I don't know these cards at all. Old Fogey. Someone out there is going to troll me. With a card that doesn't actually exist. Oops, I'll get to you, monologue. Or right, monocle. Uh, okay, old fogey. We got green, green, seven, seven, dinosaur. Got to summon this dinosaur. It's got phasing, cumulative upkeep one, echo, fading three, bands with other dinosaurs, protection from homerids, snow covered plains walk, flanking, and rampage two. That is word soup. However, that actually works. These kids today with their collector numbers and their newfangled tap symbol, 20 black lotuses and 20 plague rats. Now that's real magic. Back in the plague rats days. Nikachu missed the most important part. Baron Glory actually got printed, did it? Is that a real card? Oh, so like the cheese stands alone was so popular. Oh wow, they made the cheese stands alone an, an, an actual Magic the Gathering card. You never know when that... So maybe I have a chance for more or less to ever come into existence. Come on, more or less. Give it to me, baby. Someone out there at Wizards, listen to me. More or less would be an amazing Magic the Gathering card. All right, we got the Monocle. Thank you very much for the super chat. Ambiguity, despite being difficult to understand. Don't worry, back then, everything was hard to understand. Ambiguity. All right, it's... Oh, God. Okay, blue, blue, two generic enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell that counters a spell that has been played or a player plays a spell that comes into play with counters... Oh, it's a card that no matter if it has counter on it, it some, does something. That player may counter the next spell played or put an additional counter on a permanent that has already been played but not countered. Very convoluted card, but it actually works. Counter this counter. I think R&D was just making fun of how probably people get confused. Wow, you counter a spell, but then you put counters on this card. Does that mean that it gets countered and goes to the graveyard? You know, they, they, they messed up their words. 
Too many counters. They should just say, put a dice on this card. But then I guess they did. Or then they didn't want to get associated with gambling. All right, what do we got next? Um, yeah, I'm probably going to get slightly demonetized. Or no, City of a Asa? I think you mean City of Ass. I think that's what you mean. Yeah. There's only one. It's the City of Brass. And it does work, right? City of, City of Ass comes into play tapped. Tap, add one and a half mana of any... <laughs> one and a half mana of any one color to your mana pool. But, dot, dot, dot. Oh, I didn't even know there's a little crack over here in the butt cheeks. Hold on, this doesn't actually work. Add one and a half mana. Hold on. You can't have half mana in this game. That doesn't work, actually. As funny as the silver border card is. Do you include acorn stamps? Uh, I'm only... No, I want a silver cards. I want cards that are not supposed to be in this game, but could be in this game. Technically. Technically. All right, let's look at Abzo's saw in half. Uh, this is not Silver Border. This is a legal card, right? If I understand this correctly. This is a real card. Very... Okay, hold on. We, I, I saw a very cryptic command somewhere. Yeah, so, so on half is legal. It's legal! So it's illegal for this show. Silver border degenerates fast. Oh, hold on, I saw very... Okay, let's look up very cryptic command. Very cryptic command. How cryptic is this going to get? All right, blue, 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 one generic. Instant, choose two. Switch targets power and toughness until end of turn. That's totally legal. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. That's just a, I don't know, sort of a poor ability. Draw a card. If that card's art is by Wayne England, you may reveal it and draw another card. That is very bizarre. And then assemble a contraption. All right, that barely works. That barely, it's very strange that, you know, there'd be any mechanic that re uh, has anything to do with uh, an artist, particularly Wayne England, but you know, whatever. Look at me, I'm the DCI. Oops. Look at me, I'm the DCI. Oh, and there's the R and D too. Okay, let's look at the DCI one. Okay, white, white, five generic. For a sorcery, ban a card other than basic land card for the rest of the match. That is interesting. All cards with that name in any zone or sideboard are removed from the match. Very, very cool. It's a little bit out of the range of what usually happens in Magic the Gathering. But I assume that if a card gets banned, it's only at most four cards. And you can just refill your deck up to 60 with cards from your sideboard. Because, I mean, you're going to play this in, like, game one anyway. If you, oh, but what happens if you regurgitate this over and over again? Like you flash it back and ban your opponent's entire deck, and then they don't even have a starting 60. That'd be ridiculous. Okay, right, well, that might that might break the rules. <laughs> this one might not actually work, but whatever. Is there a card called Bingo? B I N G O B I N G O. B I N G O. And Tarmo was his name. Oh. Okay, we got a green one generic for a 1 1 hound with trample. Whenever a player casts a spell, put a chip counter on its converted mana cost. Bingo gets plus 9 plus 9 for each set of three numbers in a row with chip counters on them. That doesn't really make any sense. I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm going to accept the banned one. <laughs> this is okay. This is now again turned into like one of these shows where I'm going to rate your suggestions for the topic of today's show. Tournament rules are you may replace all legal cards with a basic land to start. Oh, that's true. All right. So that last one does work. It does technically work. So you flash back and ban your opponent's entire deck. Um, they're going to start off with 60 cards the next game. Cosmic Seas with Ak! Hans, run! Hans! Sophie! 
What a wonderful day to not get eaten, Sophie. All right, what does Akon's run do? Green, green, red, red, too generic. Does this even have anything to do with the lore? At the beginning of your upkeep, you may say Akon's run, it's the, and name a creature card. If you do, search your library for the named card, put into play, then shuffle your library. That creature has haste, remove it from the game at end of turn. So basically, you're just naming a card. You name a card, get to tutor it onto the battlefield. It's like a weird, uh, it's like a sneak attack slash, yeah, fires of Yamaya or something. But it actually works. Krark's other thumb. Uh, coming from someone called Integer. Krark's other thumb. Actually, I was trying to make a joke with digits. Integers can be digits. Digits are thumbs. Whatever. Leave that to somebody else. Crux of the Thumb is too generic for a legendary artifact. If you would roll a die, instead roll two of those dice and ignore one of those results. That is a totally legal card. That could definitely be a real magic card. It would make dice rolling broken. <laughs> so what would what would this break? I'm sure this would break something in um, those the, that D and D set. Do we have is fat ass an actual card? Fat ass. We already used the word ass today, so uh, don't worry about using the word ass for the rest of the show. Fat ass. See butt crack and everything. Okay, we got green for generic for a two, three and a half. No, there's no such thing as two, three and a half in this world. Fat ass gets plus two, plus two, and trample as long as you're eating. That this is not a real magic card. That is nonsense. All right, John, with this super chat, thanks so much. Infinity Elemental. Infinity Elemental uh, is a red, red, red for generic. Infinity 5 Elemental. This creature has infinite power. It's so infinite that its flavor text says, it's so infinite its flavor text says, I don't know about this one. What if someone something has infinite defense? Do they just bounce? Do they just trade? Or uh, do they bounce? Do they trade? Does nothing happen? They say infinite life beats infinite attack. Anyway, I'm gonna say no. This thing. We don't have anything with infinite. You gotta in. There's no such thing as infinity actually in the rules. You gotta choose a number. So choose something. You can fling it for infinite. <laughs> fling it for infinite damage. All right, what do we have here? Uh, garbage elemental and very cryptic command have multiple forms for your information. Some are valid, others aren't. What's garbage elemental? Garbage. Garbage. Oh, they have uh, multiple forms. Okay, that's okay. We're just going to look at one. I'm not going through all of them. Red for generic for a 2-4 with Frenzy 2. Whenever this creature attacks and it isn't blocked, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. That's totally fine. Garbage elemental can't be blocked by wordy creatures. That's too... Way too... What's it called? Um, too open to interpretation. Was Gleemax a card? From, was a silver border card? Oh, the, oh, I was thinking of something else. Okay, Gleemax for one million mana. It's for those devoted druid decks. Legendary artifact. You choose all targets for all spells and abilities. Holy moly! That's a pretty cool card. And it's not impossible to cast because if your deck has infinite mana, then you can cast this. They should start making some stuff like this, like 1,000 mana, 1 million mana. Like, what is it? It's just basically, if you have infinite mana, you can cast the card. You can cast Gleamax with Mox Lotus on the, on the field, can you? No. This requires 1 million mana. Or the Mox... Oh, so on Mox Lotus? I don't know what Mox Lotus is. Hold on, Mox Lotus. Is that another card? Mox Lotus, 15 mana. Tap at infinite mana. <laughs> you don't lose life due to mana burn. Was there a mana burn back then? I figured they would have gotten rid of it by then. 
Oh, well. Okay, we're going to look at more silver border cards that may or may not actually work in the actual game of Magic the Gathering. Uh, but first, we got to thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. I messed up my... Does it look good here? No. Whatever. FusionGamingOnline.com. My uh, first place to go I go whenever I want to buy my Magic cards. They got a... There we go. March of the Machine. And also any of the new sets coming out. If you need them singles, you know where to look. You go to FusionGamingOnline.com. Don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu, though, for 5% off. And it lets them know that uh, I sent you there. So it supports the channel. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. If I want to play test a format to find the best deck for me in that format, I use Mana Traders. Because it's way more expensive buying decks and selling them back. Instead, you just... For a monthly subscription price, you can rent as many decks as you want. And you can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore 3RS. All right, back to these bizarro, bizarro cards. Whoops, where am I? There we go. Let me find my bearings here, people. Let me find my bearings. Okay, I'll enlarge myself. Oh, I'm gonna do a booster to hunt. Do, do we have any other super chats? Did I miss any super chats? You people are clan. Uh, okay, did I do Infinity Elemental? Thank you very much for this uh, super chat. Well, that was garbage elemental. Hold on, Infinity Elemental. You guys are actually really active in chat. You'll love today's topic big time. Oh no, we did do uh, Infinity Elemental. Thank you very much. Okay, next, uh, Herbert. Thank you very much for the super chat. Storm, Crow Storm? Is it just Storm, but a bunch of Storm Crows? Crow Storm! Oh, we don't need this thing. Okay, crow, blue, two generic sorcery. Create a 1-2 create blue bird creature token with flying name Storm Crow. Storm Crow has two toughness? I thought it was one toughness. And it's got Storm. Get 20 storm, have 40 toughness on the board. Okay, I'm gonna look booster tutor. Because I actually we ha we played that uh, in cube, so I had a cube group that we and we played with this card all the time. It was a great card, and it worked. Hold on, that storm crow card by the way worked. So booster tutor is a black instant. Open a sealed magic booster pack, reveal the cards, and put one of them into your hand. This works really well when you're drafting. So when you're drafting, this is, yeah, it's it's a really cool. I mean, you can do one, we had, our rule was you could do, you could make a booster from the rest of the cube pile, or you could literally buy a pack from the store and then open something up. Open a sealed pr booster product. <laughs> you saved that Urza Saga pack all those, all these years for this. That's right. Booster Tutor is probably the one of the most playable cards in all of Silver Border history. Okay, Levy with Greater Morphling. As if Morphling wasn't great enough. Okay, Greater Morphling. Oh, God. It's like a custom... It's like one of those custom MTG cards. Blue, blue, six generic for a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, okay. Pay two. Greater Morphling gains your choice of Banding, Bushido, Double Strike. Okay, just a bunch of abilities. Can also become the color of your choice until end of turn. The type becomes the creature type of your choice until end of turn, so you can become a merfolk. Also, uh, its expansion symbol becomes a symbol of your choice until end of turn. That's actually relevant sometimes, because there is a card called Sydney of the Bottle, which blows up everything from Arabia Nights. Uh, so there may be other cards that also affect set symbols. Gurz Morphling's artist becomes the artist of your choice until end of turn. That usually is not relevant. <laughs> Ever. And uh, Greater Morphling gets plus two, plus two, sorry, plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two until end of turn, and untap Greater Morphling. All right, I will barely let this one slide. The Proto Gamer. Enter the dungeon. Isn't that like a real card? Enter, whoops. Enter the dungeon. Black, black, sorcery. Players play a magic sub game under the table, starting at five life. Oh, God. And using their libraries as decks. The winner searches their library for two cards, put those cards into their hand, then shuffles their library. It's Shaharazad all over again. 
Is this just Black Shahrazad? I think it's just Black Shahrazad. Kalantara says, City of Ball doesn't care about set symbol. It's been errated to look for a specific list of cards. Really? Okay, hold on. Wait, whoa, a second. Let's look at City in a Bottle. Okay, one of... Um... I can't show the whole thing. Okay, uh, it says, Whenever one or more non other non-token permits with a name originally printed in the Raven Knights expansion are on the battlefield... With a name originally... Oh, I see. So even if it got reprinted, you blow it up as well. Interesting. That's uh, that's some neat something. Some neat trivia there. The Blue Bomber! Urza Academy Headmaster. Oh, God. You know, my brother... <laughs> thinks that like there should be more Magic the Gathering cards with a QR code on them. I don't know if I agree with that, but this is like one of those cards where like, hey, scan the QR code and go to askurza.com and figure it out. Anyway, I actually don't think this is a Magic card because you need the internet. There are no other cards outside of this card where you need the internet to figure it out. So I do not think that this would work in an actual, in an actual set. Tommy, Sword of D&D. &D. Where is it? The greater... Oh, uh, is there such thing exist? Sword of D&D. &D. Sword of D&D. &D. Or it's called Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Sword of Dungeons and Dragons? I can't find this thing. Sword, sword this. I'm sorry, Tommy. I don't know where the hell this damn thing is. I don't see the sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Or the sword of D&D. &D, unless it's called something else. Are we still doing unset? We're doing... It's all... Yeah. We, we, we're looking for unset cards that actually work. In some capacity. Uh, okay, we got Jeremy over here. Thanks for a soup chat. Some in the pack. We use this in our cube as well. More cube cards. <laughs> My friend built a cheese stands alone atog atog deck and got it to work at mid power commander. He fed all his resources to various atogs, then fed the atogs to the atog and won with the cheese. Sick. All right, some in the pack. Oh, literally the pack. All right, black seven generic sorcery. Open a sealed magic booster pack. Reveal the cards and put all creature cards revealed this way onto the battlefield under your control. There's zombies in addition to other types. That is a real magic card. Sort of. For for limited. Google or Chat GPT. Wait a minute. You want me to it's Sword of D and D? Oh, it is a card. Sword of Dungeon. Well, I don't know why this didn't show up. Okay, hold on. We're going to open image and new tab. When it loads. I have to shrink myself here. All right, we got the Sword of Dungeons and Dragons. Three mana equipment artifact. Equip uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from rogues and from clerics. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, create a 4-4 four, four gold dragon. Creature token with flying and roll a d20. If you roll d, if you roll a 20, repeat this process. Sweet. Hold on. What's the point of the rolling the 20? Whenever cre create a four four gold dragon creature token with flying and roll a d20. If you roll a 20, repeat the process. So you basically roll it for nothing. On Scryfall, you can type if funny sort of. Okay. Well, whatever. B O B. Look up the B-O-B. B-O-B. Oh, the Bob? The something of Beebles. All right, we got blue, blue, three generic for... Oh, it's a Planeswalker. It's Bob. A bunch of Beebles. What is it called? Be Bevy of Beebles? 
Okay, as Bob enters the battlefield, create four 1-1 one, one blue Beeble creature tokens. The number of loyalty counters on Bob is equal to the number of Beebles you control. That's cool. Hold on, but that doesn't make any sense. So if we go up on loyalty, shouldn't we go up on Beebles? Uh, so plus one up to X target Beebles can't be blocked this turn. Where X is the number of cards in your hand and minus one draw a card. I think it works. I think that card would actually work in real. That's why they made some of these things actual magic cards. Are we counting playtest cards? Or are we counting silver border cards? As the, it says the show, silver border MTG cards that actually work. One day we could look at playtest cards. Extremely slow zombie. Says to Mulgen. How slow. <laughs> Last strike. Black one generic 3 3. Last strike. This de creature deals combat damage after creatures without the last strike. Uh, <laughs> what is the advantage? Well, I mean, it's a 2. It is a 2 mana 3 3. It's, it's only a matter of time before they make some card like this, and then just basically everything has first strike. Uh, this is a funny one. Larry La Rarity. Oh, is that the My Little Pony card? Rarity. Rare. I, I think you mean the, the my, my Little Pony card, right? Okay, hold on. Rarity My Little Pony MTG. There we go. I don't know how to find actual like silver border cards on Scryfall. Blue, white, one generic, legendary creature, unicorn, rare and mythic rare spells you cast cost one less to cast. Pay one tap, reveal my little, reveal a my little pony toy you own until in a turn another target creature gains protection from each color in that toy's coat, mane, and outfit. And it doesn't work at all. It does not. That would not be a real magic card. Just hey, look at my toy. Now I've protection from like all this crap anyway cool card but uh or cute card but not would never be an actual card joel target minotaur we got target minotaur red one generic two one with prowess oh wow it's ahead of its time since when did it have this what does this mean target minotaur and it looks frozen but has prowess not again. Well, I don't know what that means, but anyway, it's a, that card actually works. The monocle. A W O L. Whatever that means. It is a white two generic instant. Exile target attacking creature, then remove it from the game. Then put it in the absolutely remove from the freaking game forever zone. Also, well, I mean, I guess it's from it's something beyond the exile zone. Even beyond it. Beyond exile. If your commander went there, it's never coming back. Dr. Django with Alexander Clamin Clamentin. What the hell? Alexander Clam Clamentin? We got Alexander Clam into- Oh, it's a clam. It's an actual clam. Blue 2 generic for a 0-4. Clam Folk Advisor Rebel. With a nerf gun. Or it's a super soaker. Whenever you ca cast a wordy spell, scry 2. I read enough. No, that would not be- Because that word- What is a wordy spell? I mean, we all know what a wordy card looks like. But that's so open to interpretation. That's right. Denied. Your Scryfall options probably have non-gameplay cards excluded to include them. Just have is funny before the rest of the text. Does that work? Is funny uh, more or less. Doesn't find it. Can't fi I can't find uh, I can't find the cards. That's why we're on Gatherer today. This is broken with Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Sarah Chicken from Markzilla. Uh, do I have the right Sarah? I 
can't find. I know this card exists. It's weird. Not even. Not even Wizards has all their cards. <laughs> There's an actual Sierra. Oh, this is Sierra Chicken. MTG. All right. Is this it? Chicken a la King? No. Or maybe this card doesn't exist. Where is the Sarah Chicken? Is this Sarah Chicken? This is Mesa Chicken. Anyway, I don't know if the card exists what you want. Okay, moving on. We've got uh, Stetson Hershey. Thanks so much for the super chat. Anyone say Clock Napper? Cube Nightmare. Clock Napper. Blue, blue, three generic for a 2 2 human spy. Love the art. When Clock Napper enters the battlefield, choose beginning phase, pre combat main phase, combat phase, post combat main phase, or ending phase. Steal that phase from target player during his or her next turn. That is sweet! You steal the steps that you can. They should make that with steps as well. Steal their untap step. You don't untap anything, and I double my untaps. That'd be broken. That actually looks like a broken card. Blue Bomber! Did we do cheaty face? We did not. Probably because it's... Is it is it real? Cheaty face is in your hand. You may sneak cheaty face onto the battlefield. If an opponent catches you right away, that player may exile cheaty face. I don't think this would be a real card. <laughs> the Proto Gamer. Staying power. I've never seen this one before. Okay, white, two generic, enchantment. Until end of until end of turn and this turn, effects don't end. What? Oh, okay, so like if something said until end of turn, it's just like for eternity. I'm surprised they haven't made a card like this. That is a very unique, unique card. And I think that would fetch like a really big, uh, really pretty penny. Imagine the type of thing that you could do with this card. Mongo's fleas no longer bothered him, but the family of goblins that had moved in behind his left ear was starting to get really irritating. Yeah, whatever that means. Yeah, this Zyber is so hard. This is definitely a Zyber card. Yo, little Ted, I know my ABCs. Do you? I'm assuming this is a real card. I know my ABCs MTG. Oh, now I know my ABCs. Why can't I zoom in on this damn thing? Now I know my ABCs. All right, blue, blue, one generic enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control permanents with names that include all 26 letters of the English alphabet, you win the game. Control permanents. I guess we can allow that. I guess so. It's going to be hard to fill in the Q's and the Z's, though. And the X's. Let's look at save life. Wait, is that the full card? Let's look at save life. Oh! Okay, we got one white instant. Choose one. Target player gains two and a half life. No, that's <laughs> that doesn't work. We don't play. We don't win or do any. We don't attack, defend, or gain life in increments of like fractions. I guess. I mean, maybe maybe I shouldn't be so harsh on this because technically we can write it down. But imagine you have to, like, you gain three quarters life and your life is already at, like, one third. You know, who's doing the math on this? Or prevent the next one and a half, two and a half damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn. Gotcha! Whenever an opponent says save or life, you may say gotcha if you do return save life from your graveyard to your hand. Just for that paragraph, I'm gonna say this is this wouldn't work and this doesn't actually work again. It doesn't play by any conventional Magic the Gathering rules. It's ridiculous. Art ban. Oh, I gotta see this. Oh, this came up. Oh, you're just talking about the, uh... I don't I think they could allow this. Let's be serious. There's Magic the Gathering art that's way more revealing than a girl in a bikini, alright? 
there's way worse on actual Magic the Gathering art. And in a relatively modern day age as well. You ever look at Thassa, God of the Sea? She bears all. Okay, common courtesy. Common courtesy. Blue, blue, two generic enchantment. Whenever a player casts a spell without asking your permission while casting it, counter that spell. When a player asks you permission to cast a spell and you refuse, counter that spell and sacrifice common courtesy. What a stupid card. So it would not work at all. Anime library. Moving on. We got anime library. What is this all about? Blue, blue, four generic aura. Enchant your library. Of all the things that you can enchant. <laughs> isn't your library technically not a permanent? Enchant library is an artifact creature on the battlefield with power and toughness, each equal to the number of cards in it. It's still a <laughs> it's still a library. If enchant library would leave the battlefield, exile animate library instead. What a funny card. I'm going to allow this one. I like it. Okay, we got the we got the Taylord King. Uh Baron Von Count. The Count. These literally count. It's a human villain. I like how they ha just literally call it a villain. Red black one generic for a 3/3 three, three human villain. Baron Von Count airs the battlefield with a doom counter on 5. Whenever you cast a spell with the indicated numeral in its mana cost, text box, power, toughness, move the doom counter one number to the left. It's like you're saying five. When the doom counter moves from one, uh, destroy target player and put that doom counter on five. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, I guess we'll let it. I guess we'll let it go. I guess we'll let it go. The Proto Gamer. Our market research shows that players like... Oh, God. Word soup name. Our market research. Hopefully, it just shows up after. Shows. There we go. Okay, well, so... Uh, yeah, long name. So, it's green, green, one generic for a 2-2. Two, two. Art Rampage 2. Whenever this becomes blocked by a creature, it gets plus 2, plus 2 for each creature in the blocker's art beyond the first. No. It don't work. <laughs> destroy target. Yeah, you can destroy target player. Everything a majig. I like the sound of that. Everything a majig. Okay, could this be a real card? Five generic artifact. Pay two. Tap. Draw a card. Activate this ability only if you have no cards in hand. All right, that passes. Pay eight. Tap. You gain ten life. That also passes. Pay four. Tap. Sacrifice everything a majig. You may put a silver bordered permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. That all checks out. That all checks out. I think we looked at the Urza Planeswalker. It's a, it's a bunch. Of, it's a bunch of nonsense. There are six versions of everything a majig. Why did they do that? Well, I only see one version here. Sorry about that. Uh, do I miss any super chats? Nope. I have a feeling Flavor Judge is not gonna pass, just based on the name. There's no way. Oh, sorry, it's the American spelling. Sorry. Us Canadians and putting U after O after everything. Flavor Judge. White, one generic for a 2 2 bird advisor. Tap, choose target spell or ability that targets a permanent you control, then ask a person outside the game uh, if the story of what will happen makes sense. If they say no, sacrifice Flavor Judge and counter that spell or ability. Yeah, this don't work. Did we look at Skull Saucer yet? We did not look at Skull Saucer. Whatever the hell that is. Uh, it is as advertised. It's a skull on a saucer. All right. Black, black, four generic for a 4-1 zombie head. Uh, with flying, when skull saucer enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and put your head on the table. Sacrifice skull saucer when your head stops touching the table. 
I don't think this this card works either. Oh, uh, we did cheese cheese stands alone. Oh, gifts given. Let's look at gifts given. Instead of gifts ungiven. Uh, no, this is actual gift. No, I want gifts given. Damn it. All right. Apparently, we got we got to go to Google. Gifts given. MTG. There we go. Oh, it's one of those holiday cards. Gifts given. Uh, blue three generic. Uh, search target opponent's library for four cards. So we look for their library. We're taking stuff out of their pocket. Uh, with different names and reveal them. That player chooses two of those cards. Put the chosen cards into the player's graveyard. Then the rest into your hand. And that player shuffles their library. Now. There is actually no. I guess this is the only card in the history of anything. Where you get to take somebody else's cards and put them into your hand. Uh, but other outside of that, I mean, there's no rule against it. It's just that they've never designed a card to do that. So this card passes. I think this card actually passes. Argentina is like the ultimate nightmare of the Wizard of the Coast customer service. Oh, is that an actual card? The ultimate, the ultimate nightmare. Da -da -da -da. The ultimate nightmare. Of Wizards of the Coast customer service. It's a sorcery for uh, Red Red ZYX. I guess that's technically possible. The ultimate nightmare of Wizards of the Coast customer service deals X damage to each of Y target creatures and Z target players. What the hell? I guess this technically works though. It could be real. Is there a called card the big idea? Rules lawyer cannot work in real. <laughs> Alright, the big idea! Red Red for generic for a 4-4 Brainiac villain. Uh, hybrid of Rakdos, Rakdos, 2 generic, tap, roll a 6-sided die, create a number of 1-1 one, one red Brainiac creature tokens equal to the result. Tap 3 untapped Brainiacs you control. The next time you would roll a 6-sided die, instead roll 2 6-sided die and use the total of those results. Great number one one. I think this works, right? I think this is fine. Abs are trying to get in that goblin tutor. Does it actually tutor goblins? Oh, that's a cool art. I like that one. Red, instant, roll a six sided die. If you roll a one, goblin tutor has no effect. Otherwise, search your library for in the indicated card, reveal it, put it into your hand, the shelf of your library. 2. A card named Goblin Tutor. 3. An enchantment. 4. An artifact. 5. A creature. 6. An instant or sorcery. It feels like Gamble. And actually this card works. 100% it works. Great card. They should add this in the D&D &D set. What is wrong with them? Cards like big uh, furry monster work in Yu-Gi-Oh! So why not, <laughs> why not in Magic? Doesn't Magic have like big free monster cards, like those splice cards you can combine to make a big giant card? Bribery, Bribery searches an opponent's library but does not put cards into your hand. That's the difference. So there's plenty of stuff where you search your opponent's library. There's tons of cards like that. But um, none that actually put the cards into your hand. It's a no-no zone. It's usually what they don't do. Levy with the... Super chat, what I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you Sonic the Hedgehog. Deadhead for Mr. Deadhead. Oh yeah, okay. Mr. Deadhead in chat. Oops, I'll get to you in a second. Deadhead for black three generic. We got a three three zombie. Put deadhead into play. Use this ability only if an opponent loses hold on. You can just put it into play. Use this ability only if an opponent loses contact with his or her hand of cards, and only if deadhead is in your graveyard. That does not work. A bit stupid. We got Gorlord! Who, what, when, where, and why? Oh god. This is a multi split card or something? What? When? Hopefully that's good enough. Oh god. Okay, hold on. Who, what, where, when, why, MTG. Oh my goodness! What do we have here? So it's like a it's a super split card. They got like four three card so they got four cards on a split card and then they have one of those cards is a split card itself. 
This is ridiculous. Max loves this. Holy moly! I agree. Okay, what do, what do we got here? So, when? Blue 2 generic. Counter target creature spell. Why? Green 1 generic. Destroy target enchantment. Where? Black 3 generic. Destroy target land? At instant speed? Who? Target player gains X life. It's a white and X. And then for red 3 generic, destroy target artifact. This card's broken! I mean... Yeah, this is a real card, but this card is absolutely broken. Like, it can do everything. It's a bit disgusting. Now, this is a mega cryptic command. Uh, we did Gleamax. The Ear Earl of Squirrel. Big shout out to Dan Lowe on Facebook. Uh, Earl of... <laughs> I don't even know why I keep streaming this on Facebook. I mean, there's like, I don't know, 50 people that like to watch it there. And I guess one person live. Okay, the Earl of Squirrel. We got green, green, four generic for a four, four squirrel advisor. Squirrel Link. Damage dealt by this creature also causes you to create that many one, one green squirrel creature tokens. That's pretty strong. Creature tokens you control are squirrels in addition to their other creature types. And squirrels you control get plus one, plus one. That's totally a legal card. Definitely could be a thing. Uh, did I miss a... Just caught up and wanted to say that all spells that use the keyword wordy had an explanation what it meant. Oh. Whatever's. Okay. Okay, Taylor King! As luck would have it. As luck would have it for a green, it's an enchantment with hex proof. Whenever you roll a die, put a number of luck counters on all as luck would have it equal to the result. Then if there are a hundred or more luck counters on as luck would have it, you win the game! That is a sweet card. So what hold on, what are all the luck stuff we have here? We got a rabbit. You know, you get them rabbit's foot. They're crossing their fingers. Crossing both fingers, I think. Where's the uh horseshoe? We got the pot of gold. I can't find the horseshoe. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Whatever. Cool stuff. We did very cryptic command. Uh, world bottling kit. What is this? The bottling kit. The hell is this? Five mana for an artifact. Sack world bottling kit. Choose a magic set. Remove the game. Remove from the game all permanents with that set's expansion symbol except for basic lands. Oh, neat. This sort of does actually work. They hey, they set the precedent with that city in the bottle card. What can I say? They set the precedent with the city of the bottle card. Blast from the past. Red 2 generic instant, madness, it's, okay, it's got madness, cycling, kicker, flashback, and buyback for different costs. Blast from the past deals 2 damage to any target. If the spell was kicked, crit a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. So hold on, so we can cast it with madness and kicker. We could cycle it, and then we can flash it back or buy it back. Oh, so every single time we cast it, we can buy it back. So we can like do this in almost an infinite number of times. Pretty cool stuff. Slack Wellman enraged kill bots. What do we got here? Two mana for a 2 1 cre. Oh, yeah, it's totally legal. It works too well. Click, whir, beep, click. Reminds me of one of my old computers. It's exactly what it did all the time. So, you guys want old fogey. What's old fogey? Old fogey! Is he really all that old? Okay, green, green. Oh, we did this one. We did this one at the beginning. And it uh, li literally works. <laughs> it's got a few too many mechanics on it. What was the flavor text of these kids today? With their collector numbers and their newfound tap symbol. Oh yeah, I read that one. And the black lotuses. There are four killbots with the same art but different names. Oh, interesting. Uh, 
Jera Monkey. Burn loves this card. Is that is that a card? I can't. T Sometimes I can't tell if you're t saying an actual card or uh, it's a comment. Mark Zilla with handcuffs. Handcuffs. Black, black, three generic enchantment. Target player keeps both hands in contact with each other. If he or she does not sacrifice handcuffs, and that player sacrifices three cards in play. That would not work. It's not a real card. Gotta get you the real handcuffs. Target player keeps both hands in contact with each other. I don't get... Oh, whatever. That is not a real card. Ornithopter? That's an actual card. Talking silver. <laughs> We're talking silver border cards, not artifact cards. Okay, I'm trying to look through Urza's contact lenses from Mike B. Trying to get some people. I don't think I got their comment before. Urza's contact lenses. Because, you know, he, he didn't have glasses, did he? For zero mana, we got Urza's contact lenses. Or I guess he did have glasses. The glasses of Urza. But they were always... They, they were never on in the picture. Okay, Urza's contact lenses come to play tapped and doesn't not, does not untap during its controller's untap phase. All players with a play with their hands face up. Clap your hands twice. Tap or untap uh, Urza's contact lenses. That is not a real card. Yeah, go to jail. We got uh, from uh, Archambault, Vincent, three-headed goblin. Three-headed goblin. Red, red, three generic with triple strike. <laughs> so it had... It has first strike, regular strike, and that last strike that we saw that goblin have. Yeah, that works. It's true that two heads are better than one, but after that, you run into diminishing returns. I like that. All right, PM with incoming. I love that last strike. <laughs> Especially on that really slow goblin. All right, incoming. Green, 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 four generic sorcery. Each player searches his or her library for any number of artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands. And put those cards into play? Each player shuffles his or her library afterwards. Oh my god. What the hell? It's like super uh, hyper genesis. Each player shuffles his or her library. I'm curious to know what would happen. You cast this. In a commander game, and basically everyone could just put everything on the battlefield. Put these cards into play. Then I guess the person with Thassa's Oracle and some way of exiling their library at instant sp speed wins. Thassa Oracle wins. But actually, who would you? You got to be careful because your opponent's tr your triggers go on the stack first, and your opponent's triggers go on the stack uh, afterwards, and will resolve first. So if everyone goes for Thassa's Oracle, you casting incoming means you lose. Unless you can cast it at instant speed on your opponent's uh, end step. We got Robert here with the super chat. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. As a silver bordered connoisseur, Inhuman Inhumaniac is quite nice. Inhuman -ma Maniac. Inhumaniac. It's like Inhumaniac. That's what it is. Inhumaniac. We got a black, one generic, one, one Brainiac. It rem reminds me of, uh, was it Animaniacs? Is that what it was? Something in the brain? I don't remember. Okay, black one generic, one one Brainiac. At the beginning of your upkeep, roll a six sided die. On a three or four, put a plus one plus one counter on Inhumaniac. On a five or higher, put two plus one plus one counters on it. On a one, remove all count. Oh, you remove all your counters from Inhumaniac. For the mind-minded mastermind. That is a real card. That absolutely could work. Brainiac is a superhero villain. If I remember. I can't remember. There was that... Pinky and the Brain. That's what I was thinking of. Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. Animaniacs, Pinky and the Brain. Extremely slow zombie has four artworks in different seasons. His body keeps degrading throughout the four. <laughs> the flavor text is also connected. Oh, that's sweet. All right, my head mod, Lord Magica, says Snow Mercy. What the hell does that mean? 
Oh, yeah, we should look at Blacker Lotus later. What? We can't find Snow Mercy? Snow Mercy MTG. Snow Mercy! White, white... Oh, it's a happy holiday card. White, white, too generic. Whenever a creature deals damage to you, put a globe counter on it. Pit, tap or untap, tap, untap, tap. Tap all creatures with globe counters on them. I guess that works. It's a little convoluted and stupid, but the like the end result is you just you just tap it. Warn it. Oh, I get it. It's the flavor. You gotta shake it. You shake it up. All right, let's look at um, what was it? Black or Lotus? Once you go black, you don't go back. You, you want to go blacker? Okay. Zero artifact. Tap, tear, black, or lotus into pieces. Oh, God. Add four mana to any one color to your mana pool. Place ability as a mana source. Remove the black, remove the pieces from your game afterwards. Makes, yeah, that's, that would not work. That is not a real card. We got Garlord. R&D secret lair. Looking, looking, looking for it. Have we done Gleam? Yeah, we did Gleamax. The one million mana card. Yeah, it is a snow globe. I can't find this thing. Hold on, maybe Google will be faster. We're overloading. Okay, R&D Secret Lair. Legendary... Oh, it's a land! Play cards as written, ignore all errata, tap one to your mana pool. I don't think that would work. As written may be o way too open for interpretation. Way too open for interpretation. <laughs> Some cards don't really make sense if you re read them literally. John with a super chat. For, from, I think it's form of the squirrel. That's what you mean? Form of the Squirrel. As Form of the Squirrel comes into play for a green. It's an enchantment. Put a 1-1 green squirrel creature token into play. You lose the game when it leaves play. Oh, God! Creatures can't attack you. You can't be the target of spells or abilities. And you can't play spells. That is a real card. How would this work in real life? All right, creatures can't attack you. So it's like a uh, moat. So it's a green moat. You can't, you can't be the target of spells or abilities. But you can't play spells. So this is like just a high risk reward card. This is a super high risk card. You you have turned into a 1-1 one, one squirrel is essentially what has happened. Anyway, now we're going to go back to Gleamax. Okay, just... Or you're paying for it. We're going back to Gleamax. For $2, we look at Gleamax again. You choose all targets for all target spells and abilities. And I do believe this is a real card. Even at 1 million mana. Them people with infinite mana, they know how to cast this card. Uh, Emil denied. Denied. Oh, where is it? Oh, there we go. That's what we're talking about. For one blue, it's an interrupt. Uh, play denied only as any opponent cast target spell. Name a, name a card, then look at all cards in that player's hand. If the car, named card is in the player's hand, counter that spell. That's pretty sweet! I think, actually, they would make a card like this. That is not... You know, it's like... It's almost like... Uh, what's that hand discard card? I can't remember what the hand discard card is. In Legacy. It's a black. Name a card. Look at their hand. Make them discard all those cards. Go to jail. This is a real card. I guess you could just name Island or something. Actually, it'd be hard to name someone's uh, lands. All right. Well, that's it for Coffin MTG today. Hope that was fun. Uh, some of those worked. Some of those didn't. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks so much for your support, everyone who's a member on YouTube and a patron on Patreon. And also the people, I, and, oh, I love the people who super chat, who are big and part of the show. Because the more people part of the show, the better the show is. But most importantly, i got to thank all of you guys for being here on this show. Thanks to Falcon, Joel, and PM Markzilla, Niz Nielsen. we got Jer uh, Jeremonkey. 
We got Zick, Cyborg Gaming, Levy, Lord Magicus, Michael, because without you guys, I'd have no show. So as usual, you keep brewing up them coffees and we'll keep brewing up the magic. So take care of yourselves and I will see you, of course, at the next cup.